everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Well, that big John Deere shuffle weeks ago is finally all coming together. We have some time on our hands. It's early in the day, and we have some parts that were ordered weeks and months ago in the shop on hand, and we're starting in on a John Deere 720 diesel head gasket. These are vintage John Deere two-cylinder tractors. They're nice to work on. They're good to run. This tractor, however, has had a 12 volt conversion and they only did a partial conversion, so there was issues with batteries and starting. So we have been pull starting this tractor for quite a while. We're looking into all the things that need to get done on it, but it has got exhaust coming out through the radiator and then it all spews out. So to get any job done, you gotta have a couple gallons of water on hand with you. And in making hay, that's kind of tough because you're having to constantly check it. I myself am not good about checking the fluids and things like that. He knows to do it. He has to remind me to do it and get it done if I'm running them. We're trying to make all the tractors so that they're easier to maintain, have the parts on hand if things come up, have any major repairs already done on them before our hay season starts. And even though it's cold and it was 23 degrees this morning, you know we're going to be out there when it's 90 and 100 degrees in July doing hay and it'll get here sooner than we think. So does the temperature gauge work on this since they did their wiring conversion and uh, things? So you have to really watch it. They, they put a 12 volt alternator on it and something got kicked. We've never done that to one of them. We just leave them alone. Mm -hmm. And they put an alternator on it and still had a six volt battery. And it, everything worked fine for a while. We ran it for quite a few hours after we bought it, and then, like, for instance, this wire, all of a sudden one day, this, this wire burns the coating right off. This is the wire that goes to the pony motor, the red light for the pony motor that tells you you don't have oil pressure. Mm -hmm. Certain things in certain places were just getting fried. So we just unhooked the battery and quit using the electrical at all and pull started it so we didn't hurt anything. We don't know what they did wrong or if there's a short, but something about this conversion mm -hmm. they didn't do it right and it's, um, caused this problem so we're going to put it all back we bought a used six volt generator like it had yeah just like that okay that this one's all still correct everything on that one looks perfect so probably we have four of them with pony motors you said and we have fuel lines coming for the pony motors, which was a super hard thing to find. And well, we hope they're coming because yeah. they were actually on another website months ago and they wanted maybe $22, $24 for shipping. And I couldn't get an email response uh, to get details and information. All of a sudden they showed up on another website. I just happened to come across them yesterday put in an order for them and it didn't say that there was a maximum or a minimum available and it was free shipping so we're going to find out. I hope it works because we ended up getting four of them for slightly more than what it cost for one from John Deere. Uh, there's a guy making them aftermarket on uh, eBay for sale. Well you could make them aftermarket yourself. The trouble is is finding out all the exact fittings. We had the fuel line, we had couplings, but there was something kind of odd. Was it five, a 516 fitting, you thought? It's a 516 inverted, inverted flare. A 516 inverted flare. With a 18 pipe, pipe thread. So it's real rare, real hard to find, and so you kind of have to piece things together. But once you know what parts you're dealing with, then you kind of can avoid the dealership. Well, we try to get as many of our parts off of eBay as we can, and that becomes trouble when you want to get into a repair or, you know, something happens. Like, he's pretty sure this has blown a head gasket. His dad actually did the work on this. And we're hoping that it's not more than that. Um, but he's, you know, thinking that something wasn't quite right with it and it failed. So we're doing it over. He had the head set. Yeah. And it's fine. So. so. He retorked it when he was supposed to. Everything was done right, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it started, uh, this, this did it. Okay. You want me to show you? So what is the part here you took off now? That's the exhaust manifold. Okay. I'll, I'll go grab the gasket so you can show them. 
what this one did when we were plowing. Okay. Yeah, he. I remember this tractor was the probably the first one we ever got. Well, he was plowing with it when we were very early on the farm, and all of a sudden it just it blew, and he was you know deep in a furrow, and they had to they had to get it back to the they had to get it back to the main barn, and it has been parked needing work and repairs. So, you know, one job, then another job. But he went to go grab his parts so he can show you what's going on. This is the head gasket off the track we are sitting on. Uh-huh. And I did this head gasket job. And what it did, it blew this piece right out oh. while we were plowing. And this gasket's made of metal. Yeah. Okay. So it's so, not like gasket material. Um, it, it was odd that it happened. The tractor was actually going downhill at mm -hmm. the time it wasn't really working and it was sending steam out the exhaust so i pulled the deep compression lever mm -hmm. otherwise it could have hydro locked and blown it up sent a rod it just destroyed the engine so when we got it apart that's what it was it's a john deere headset that i did and it went for years after that and never and then this one was retorched and everything was done properly and it didn't last very long so we'll see okay so what's going on with the tractor I'm sitting on now? Um, ignition switch. Oh. So both of these tractors have electrical trouble. So that has a switch which you can buy. I don't think we ever bought one yet mm -hmm. because we've just been either belt starting or pole starting it for that one. Um, they're all different if you have a pony or if you have electric start. And they have different transmissions also. So if you're ever you know like out shopping. Um, he, he can tell you about that, but we we have two different transmissions uh, on ours, right? Yeah, this this is a slow one. Mm -hmm. This is a fast one. Um, on the diesels, they had an option. The way you can tell, a first gear is over reverse. It's mm -hmm. a slow transmission, and on a fast transmission, this will be second gear. Okay. So, and for hay, mm -hmm. well, everything about them works better when they're fast. We've got. Okay. It's harder to find a fast one, but we somehow have ended up with a few. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi, bud. So where are you working on taking off right there now? This is the intake manifold and coolant. All three of those come out the top. And then there's a coolant pipe underneath that goes from the bottom of the cast radiator to the bottom of the head. Mm -hmm. That has to come off, then the valve cover, injectors, all that stuff. Now, I'll have the head off this in, in a matter of no time. You can do this job in a day. Okay. Oh, man. This, this track. So you will know to take the head gasket here just a little bit. And we can't take the head and have it checked again, but we already did. But but if the head is bad, it would blow out the gasket in the same spot? For some reason on these, if they have something wrong with the head, mm -hmm. they'll make the head gasket blow. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's these little spots in the head, like behind the valve, where some, some guys, when they'll check them, they don't even catch it. And if you see uh, Grandpa had one on 730, like in the 60s, mm -hmm. and it would blow a head gasket every year. And then he just kept doing it, and then finally they found a problem that kept getting missed in the head. He put a, a new or a used head on it, and he never did it again. So, so how much is the head gasket kit, and what does the head cost? Uh, a used head is a few hundred. Um, from John Deere, the head gasket set that comes with every O-ring and truck wash you need to do the whole job is like one eighty nine. You can probably get them cheaper elsewhere, but... Okay, so this is the set that he picked up a while ago, and this did come from John Deere. It says it is RF524072. 
And this is for the 720 and the 730. And on the package, it even has the parts list saying what all the gaskets are that are included. So there's that. You're needing a specific gasket pause your video and you can see what everything is so let's unbox this a little bit and show you what we've got just a pile of gaskets what does a bunch of gaskets cost oh my yeah he said he thinks it's 189 so you've got all your felt gaskets, some O-rings, looks like a rubber spacer. This one's a little different. It's a hard material. I don't know quite what that is. Here's your cork gaskets. I don't know what you call it. It feels like a, almost like a plastic. And then the metal one underneath. And inside of the box is John Deere 3588. So that's what you get. A whole bunch of gaskets. Sure not much for what they charge you. And that's why we were really squawking about paying the price for the uh, pony motor fuel line. It's, you know... $5 fitting on a $5 piece of hose and he said it was $75 for that fuel line through the dealer yeah and I think an aftermarket one that the guy was making on eBay was maybe $45 oh, open it and show me again uh-huh I see uh-huh it shouldn't be that much. So they're wore out on all four of the tractors. The one is leaking and you can't even start it off the pony motor. So we started looking into it and just decided since I found the ones I was looking for to order all of them. One, two, reverse. Three, five, four, six. He always takes his seats off for weather when he's got them outside. And I don't know where they've all ended up, but I've been collecting them and taking them in and working on a project for seat repairs and seat covers. This is the 40 and the whole back, the wood just rotted right out of it. And the same thing happened on the 620, when I was using it the last time, it was getting hung up on our last haymaking when Trey and I were raking. So, a lot of seat repairs, they get in bad condition, see that? But I found, you can get this foam through Joanne Fabrics. When I restuffed my sofa, you can get the foam through Home Depot for a lot less money. So I think we need to order another slab or two so that we can do all the seats. I figure as long as you're sitting on a tractor and doing all the work, you should have some good cushion. And that was the thing that I didn't like about the Lada, the N-Series Ford tractors that I was looking at. I started realizing that, you know, sitting on a pan seat like that is quite uncomfortable for any amount of time. And these have float ride seats, so they're even better for your back um, so that you're not hurting at the end of the day. So what'd you get off there? That's the valve cover? So what's the part you're prying on now? Um, the fuel lines come in here, push rods come from there, I guess you, I don't know, I don't know what they call it, maybe the top cover uh, over the top of where the pistons are. Okay. Nice and caked on. Yeah, he put RTV or something on everything. I had a hard time getting this off. Cast cover, too. 
Priest come out and join the service job now. And we had him fetch a light so that Dad could see a little better. Not getting much sunlight in this section of the barn. I did measure the seats. They're four inch. So we're going to put it in order for that. I think I have to either get two two inches and glue them together or get four inch. I think it'd be better to not have to glue it together if I don't have to. He got his paint scraper and was able to tap that in there to get it off. This is good work for Trey to be watching and learning about because it's guaranteed he's going to be our farmer. I should say it's pretty well guaranteed that he's going to be our farmer. He already loves it. He's already cleaned the tractor for himself. And he lives and breathes it. He dreams about working on the farm. He's teaching his little brother all about it. What are you doing over there on that side? Fuel line comes down to the top of the cover and have him take the thing out. Okay. He glued these on, but we don't because you have to get in there to work on something. Mm -hmm. And you glue them on like the you destroy it. You wreck the gasket. Yeah. So. That's what I was just thinking. It's guaranteed that you have to replace the gasket. Yep. And if you had to get just a single gasket, can you? Maybe. Or if you just take it off careful, then. I think that one comes with this, but. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Your problem. But I don't think that one really beats that bad. Some light. Okay. Uh huh. That looks like some oily uh, water. So I'm pulling the injector out. And Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Here comes some coolant. Uh huh. And that's supposed to be engine oil? Supposed or to nothing? Be air. So. Yeah. Hi, Becky. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. So. Is that oil? That's antifreeze. Uh-huh. So if antifreeze is in your engine, you're not getting the lubrication that you're supposed to, right? It's, it didn't or run. Or does it go the opposite way? It didn't run that way. Mm -hmm. It has leaked coolant in while it was sitting here uh -huh. for a little while. So, um, Where does it come from? all through the engine to keep it cool, having water in your engine, but 
this engine is broken and it went where it shouldn't go, so that's what we did. Then that's gas right there to get a gas bottle. Yup. Okay. There's fuel in there. It makes the engine run in here. Actually, if you okay. get shot out of this and turned into a mist, okay. this is where the fuel goes. Okay. Yeah. I think you need to be like filling up. It doesn't, but it does a good job, huh? Yeah. <laughs> So you pulled out another injector and there was no radiator fluid on that side. Something's wrong on or that coolant. Side. I hope it's just the gasket failed prematurely and that's all it is. Mm -hmm. Now I'm running the suction valve back. And So these are the same kinds of tractors you've worked on, like always. Well, I guess that's a good thing to stick with if it's what you're, you know, educated on, familiar yeah. with. We all have the same trouble. I was just telling him I saw a Ford tractor for sale, and it was maybe nine hundred dollars. The listing said. Ran one part, needs a starter. And then the excuse is that it needs more is, well, I didn't know, I thought it just needed a starter. Well, like he said, if all it needed is a starter, how come you don't just go put a 40 or $50 starter on it? Because a running tractor obviously can get sold for much more money. So I think for us, it's better to stick with the John Deere's that he knows how to fix and run, you know. There's always plenty of unknowns with a tractor as it is. So what are you using the socket on? Um, you get the head off of it now. That's a little loose. That may, let me go grab a one sixteen. I'll be right back. You feel about this long. Okay. So now you're taking the bolts that hold the head on? Um, or pistons on the well, head? Well, we're getting the injector pump. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's four bolts on the back side of this block or case or whatever they call it. And then there's, oh, again, six, seven, maybe. Maybe, including these, you'd say nine on the front. Yeah. So, but yeah, now we're getting the actual, getting the actual head off. Okay. All the fuel lines are out. heads out of the frame. Okay. It's real difficult, especially with a guy. To get that maneuvered out of there. Well, should you be taking, like, the muffler and the, uh -uh. the that, outer that, hood? No, that's okay. I was telling him we need to do an exhaust job on the 620 because when you're done using it, at, at different points, you know, just depending on the wind and the weather, you smell the exhaust coming out where it attaches. And he said it's actually cracked. 
that one. The, I'd rather be inside ordering the, parts. <laughs> the square flange that you bolt the muffler to uh -huh. is part of the top tank of the radiator. Uh -huh. And they hit something and cracked it. And they told me that. And then finally, just their crappy weld job just. I see. Didn't hold and it's just rattling around. So Could you braze it? That's probably what they did. I don't know. But so they didn't want to deal with taking the top of the tank off the radiator because there's lots of bolts and gaskets. Yeah. They're all frozen. It's a it's a big job. So sure. We'll just have to do it right and we'll buy the cast uh -huh. tank top. And okay. switch it out. Okay. It's just port gaskets that go around the uh, rectangle top of the radiator. Yeah. And then it comes out in a huge heavy cast piece and goes into there. And this pipe off the motor just kind of pokes up into it. Oh. So well, they're not going to run for 50 more years if you don't. What, how old are they now? 64. Uh-huh. So, yeah, these, these tractors are about the same age as their parents. The 40s older, right? That's a yeah. A little, my nightmare 40 over there. No matter what you do to it, we put new point, points on it. Uh, we just did all kinds of stuff. There's his dad says there's some kind of way or something wrong. And when we did have it going, uh, yeah, the steering manual steering very very tight. Something's not quite right in it. I said I can't. I can't handle that thing with the finish mower. So I said I'd be better off running that John Deere 430 mower than wrestling with this thing because, oh my, I'll be needing shoulder surgery if I keep it that. I don't know about no time for you, but. You're moving, I'm not. You said you have it all tore apart in no time. Huh? You said you have it all tore apart in no time. Yep. I'm freezing. I'm starting to lose feeling in my toes. I've been out here all day. You need to put your eyes on the valve. Uh huh? Yeah. Did it have to go back in the right spot? Hmm? Yep. He says you. Yep. <laughs> Hi, George. <laughs> Hi. One, he could sit on the forty. So that's a bolt that goes through. This is like a huge tall nut. And this one's different because those injector pumps go right over the top of it. Mm -hmm. And these are just regular nuts. There's, uh, I guess, seven of them and four on the inside. So there's, yeah, it was like a six, nine and nine on the outside, four on the inside. So. <sighs> you wouldn't think they could have a work or crap, but Well what makes the gasket um like the metal part have that hole in it? Something just wiggling or moving and then just blows it right out sideways from the pressure of the combustion. Uh-huh. Pressure in the cylinder than the fires it of it. better move that meter off the 40 for him.
So now you got to take the three across the bottom off. And the four on the inside. Uh huh. Okay. 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 All right. So his teardown is taking a little longer. He's got his inside. Uh, you said they were bolts and they're supposed to be studs. So this stud came out. Uh huh. It came out and then it's supposed to be these four nuts on studs on the inside. We got two of them. The outside ones are always a bugger. These are all loose. So, so he's going to keep at it. I'm going to take a break for my lunch because it's going on 5 o'clock and I haven't had my lunch. I had a plate full of chips. So I'm taking a break and we'll show you when he gets a little bit further. So now he's got his assembly here all put back together. He's cleaned up all his fuel lines and put them back on. We just got this gasket put on. And what'd you do down there on the bottom part? You put, put gasket maker? Silicone from the gasket to the engine, but not on the top. If you know it's gonna come back apart. Yeah. So we just silicone the gaskets always want to be a funny shape out of the box. And they won't sit there for you. So we just put a little bit enough to stick the gasket to the top of the engine, but not on the top. Okay. So how is it coming now? Now we're getting this top cover back on. And then well, it looks like you're getting everything buttoned up now. Yeah. We'll have it. We'll All your push rods are in. I hope so. <laughs> he hopes so. Is that what they mean when it like blows a rod? No. That's, or that's something that's different? Okay. These are just push rods that run your valve. So these have to be adjusted. We'll take this cover off, get them, and just kind of time it by that, and then we'll get those adjusted the first time. We have to button up the top, put the cover on the front, the water coolant pipe in the bottom is still out, just a few more things, and then we'll. Adjust the valve and belt start it. We'll let it crank over it. All the lines are full of air. Oh, sure. Gotta get it. it sometimes it, it might take it a minute to get its fuel and start it. Okay. So if you're starting it with a belt, that's nice. Yeah. You just crank it how you want with the decompression lever, no compression, just let it spin. So it'll be running here in a little bit. Great. And then we'll do some mild jobs with it when we torque the head. Okay.
So you're dumping the oil out to make sure there's no coolant in it? Yeah, there was coolant in it. Right. So I didn't want to run anymore. Okay. Uh, Oh, it's in the bucket tray. Oh, where is it? I'm gonna tie the tracker up in the thing. Find my dead bucket. Any lubrication there? Yeah. You can do it on that side tray. I just wanted you to shine the bucket. in it but there's there's coolant in it so he wants to empty it out not run it here you go until he gets oil changed in it so you're cleaning up your flywheel got everything all re tightened up on that I checked the flywheel it's tight that's important I mean mm -hmm. put this cover back on Off. We could put that back on now, and it's basically on the pony motor muffler goes on last, right in front of the tappet cover. Okay. So, it's all wrapped up, and good. So, are you going to finish that all up tonight, or are you going to come back to it tomorrow? Okay. Well, you might as well button it up so that you're just done, right? Then we'll, when we use it, we, we can just get on to the next one now. We can do the 620. Yeah, that exhaust got to me. The exhaust is broken. It needs a head gasket. That one's leaking coolant out of the side of the engine. I didn't know that. It just does it sometimes. So that one's... I mean, we might as well do it in the winter. Well, do it for me because it's. I can start that one. I'll show you guys a video sometimes. Of he showed me how to start the pony motor, and it's complicated. The seven. What is it? The six twenty gas engine. Just turn the knob to power it on, and you put your foot on a pedal, and it starts. No key starts. I like that because then we don't have to lose any keys or wonder who has it or where they left it. Take something that's been on for that many years. Mess around with it. Put the screws in a different spot. And it happens. Belt the 620. Uh -huh. you, were you filming? Yeah. Oh, we got the back of our heads and everything. Yep. Mine's bum. Huh? Mine's bum. Your bum's always hanging out of your pants. There's a lot of about. Doing now about a belt start? Yeah, now we're going to turn it over with the back here on the belt. Uh huh. The fuel system, all the lines and injectors and everything are full of air. Okay. So we'll just let it sit there on the belt and work its way out and then every once in a while we'll give it the fuel and see if it'll start on its own and then when it will, we'll have all the air out. 
open the top. Okay. You know all this stuff makes me nervous when they're all unbuttoned and opened up. Yep. It'll drip a little oil out here. Uh huh. For starts, and then we'll just wash everything, and then we'll put the valve cover back on. Look how the 40 looks so little next to the 720. Isn't she cute though? So, we'll do this now. I'm thinking obviously we don't dent our hood. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Rain cap. Huh? Rain cap. Yep. Dust in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put on all. Okay. Get your supplies. I'll go check my water. <laughs>
total mud. Their tractor just rolled forward. The thing I always like about this property is we have woods, beautiful woods. This is a section where we don't have any maple sap. There's only a couple of mature maple trees on this side of our creek and along the edge of the hayfield. So it's too much effort to get over here to tap anything, but it sure would be a good spot to get a maple grove going for future. 
No, we have got Trey over here working. This is gonna be a heck of a mess. We've got baler twine, and it looks like we had switched over to orange twine at this point. There was probably anywhere from three to six stacks of hay with our stack wagon here. Oh, that is coming along nice. Look at all that compost. <laughs> he says it's not so nice. I just got a big thumbs down. Yeah, it's not working out. Well, it's full of strings. There's about two or three billboard tarps that had covered it. And when winter came along for us to come out and get it, the tarps had been blowing off. So we waited till spring because it's downhill of everything. And then the cows hated it. They didn't want to eat it. So, he's been working on the backhoe, but there's a hydraulic problem. He put a line in, but there's a hydraulic cooler that he was going to try to bypass, and it wasn't working out real good. So, he got kind of in a yank today and wanted to clean this pile up this way so he can have it out of the way. This stack here came out to there. And then right at the top of that hill, all the way up the road to the dirt piles, were two rows of round bales that we used up the year before. And then further up the road is piles of dirt from the road commission. They dug out all the ditches around our area and we're on the edge of the county. So they asked us if we wanted the dirt instead of hauling it away. So the three things combined just made a huge division from our original hay field to what used to be a corn and bean field and then we ended up planting it all so the trees kind of are a divider this tree is the absolute divider um, we always kind of end up stopping at this pile and having this side of the tree to do so got some sticks to clean up and a little work going on But he says it's holding, nothing's leaking. But he said he could hear that broken, uh, I think he said push rod or uh, cam. He, he said he thought he could hear it ticking. He didn't know how long it's gonna end up holding, but his intake gasket isn't giving him any trouble. He said the temperature seems fine. Even if it's not doing it great, it's cleaning it up a lot better than we ever could by hand. I think that stack wagon stacks them nine bales high up on their end. I think it's nine by three. So this is a much better cleanup job. Good way to break in the tractor. That way he can go back, retorque the things that he wanted to, and just give it a little break in job. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you all next time. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button before you go.